Welcome back to the channel. I'm Ryan Brown. This is Tech for Senior. Today we're going to talk about five things you need to do when your new Chromebook arrives. <laughs> Chromebooks are secure, easy to use, and you can't make a mistake. It's not possible if you simply follow these five steps we're going to discuss today. But before we get on to those five steps, there's one important thing that you will need to know before starting the process, and that is what the username and password is to your Google account. And usually if I have 10 seniors sitting there waiting to start their new Chromebooks, and I say to them, what is your Google login and password? About half of them look at me in terror saying, I have no idea. I didn't even know I had a Google login or a password. So let's talk about this for a minute. So before we even get to your Chromebook, the one thing you're going to need to know is what your Google account is. And it's most likely you do have a Google account. It's very unlikely that you've gone through your life without having a Google account because most of you will have a Gmail address. Yes, a Gmail address, your user logon and password for your Gmail is actually your Google account. Now, don't feel upset or embarrassed if you don't know this, because probably 20 years ago when you set up your Gmail account, things were quite a bit different. It was pretty easy to go to Google and just get a Gmail address. But if you've gone to Google lately and got a Gmail address, address, you'll find out it's not so easy. There's a long process now and lots of explanation to create a Gmail address. In fact, when you create a Gmail address, you are creating a Google account. So if you have five Gmail addresses, then you have five Google accounts, which means you have five Google Photos accounts, you have five Google Calendars, you have five Google Contacts, and you also have five gigabits of storage for each account, so you have 25 gigabytes of online storage. And each Google address will have a login, username, and password. Before we even open the box of your new Chromebook, research for you, find your Google login and password or your Gmail login and password. All right, before we open the box, hold on, there's one more thing I want you to do. I want you to look at your Android phone. This is very important because remember, your Android phone is going to work very well with your Chromebook. And we'll be talking about this a little bit later, but the two actually are going to work together. There's great things we can do, and one is going to supplement the other. But I want to make sure that it's the same Google account on your Android phone. And in this slide, you'll see on my Android phone, it is the same account as my Google account. Yes, your username and password for your Android phone should be the same one that you're using on your Chromebook. And why is this important? Well, remember what we said about your Google Photos account? Remember your calendar? Remember your contacts? We all want those to all be seamlessly integrated, right? So we want you to be in the same account. If you have a different account on your phone, that means all your Google Photos are going to go into that account, and that may not be the same as on your Chromebook. Now, in actual fact, for most people, this isn't a problem. It would naturally be the same. But in my long history of working with people, Sometimes there are problems and an account got set up on a phone and you're always wondering why nothing matches or nothing syncs and nothing really works. And that's because it's not the same account as your PC or now your Chromebook, right? So we want them to be the same. Now you're going to say, hold on, I've got an iPhone. Whoa, let's talk a little bit about this honestly. I've had a lot of years of teaching. And I'm going to tell you one thing. If you have an iPhone, an iPad works great with it. There is no real big advantage of using your iPhone with a Chromebook. You're much better off to look at the iPad as an option. It's sort of like 
ice cream and chocolate sauce and roast beef and gravy. Ice cream always goes great with chocolate sauce and roast beef always goes good with gravy. Roast beef doesn't really go that good with chocolate sauce and ice cream doesn't go good with gravy. You really want to look at how you're going to get the best value for these devices and really an Android phone with a Chromebook and an iPhone with an iPad is something I recommend. All right, let's get oh, let's get going and we got to open that box. Oh, just a minute, there's one more thing I want to talk about. So I know you're anxious to open that box, but just one more thing we got to do is I want to talk a little bit about the login for you. Let's look at my Chromebook and I'm going to show you the four options you'll have. You're going to have the option to log in with a personal account, a business account, a child's account, or just log in. Well, you don't even have to log in, but just use your Chromebook for a guest. So you have a guest feature on your Chromebook. Now, the important thing and one of the great things about a Chromebook is you can have multiple people using your Chromebook. When you set up a separate account for a, a user, another user, um, they will have access to all their Google Drive, their Google Photos, and all the stuff that is associated with your account. But when they set it up, it's specific to them, and there's a username and password, and you can't see their stuff, nor can they see your stuff. So they're totally separate. We call it sandboxing. It's totally separate. Each account has no access to the other account. The other thing is they can't mess up your operating system. Not possible. Uh, so they can just do whatever they want in their account and it doesn't affect your account at all. Even with kids, if you want to put your kids on and give them a username and password and create a, a, a user account for them, again, they will have all their um, data there and you know kids they can get into a lot of problems but not possible in a Chromebook so they can do whatever they want they can't see your data they're not going to mess anything up as long as they log in under their username and password and then at the best and, and, and at the very end when if they're just visiting and they go away you just click delete and the account's gone and nothing is spilled over into your stuff it works great and as far as the guest goes, you can just, with the guest feature, all that you do is you just click the button and it'll put you into guests. Let me show you how, I'll show you how it works on my computer here. So let's have a look at my Chromebook. This is my Asus Chromebook Plus. And this is a screen where you can add users to your Chromebook. So if we come down to the bottom here, you'll see we have three options. We have an option to shut down, browse as a guest, or add as a person. So let's click add as a person. And this brings up uh, three, three options for you. You have an option for personal use, an option for a child, or an option for work. So if we look at personal use, this can be for your personal account. For everyday use, your own Gmail, YouTube, Google Drive, etc. You can log in here. You have full access to all Google services. You can install your own apps, extensions from Chrome Web Store or Google Play. You'll have all your uh, data synced to Google Drive. So this would be something you could set up uh, for personal use. And so anybody who, you, who wants to use this Chromebook, it could be your kids, it could be a, a colleague that wants to use this, could set up their own personal use space here and it would not affect yours. They can't see your data. They can't have access to the operating system. So let's have a look and see what happens when we open personal use up. And it says next here. And we'll come down to next. And here we are. And all you have to do is add your email address in here and you can sign in. We're not going to go through the sign-in procedure. Let's come back here. And let's come down here for work. Come down, we're gonna click the one for work, and then we're gonna come up next and see what happens. And here again, they want you to log in with your email or your phone number. Now, if you have a school account, this is where you'd probably use the work for with your employer schools, your Google Workspace, because the device and account settings may be managed by an administrator. Certain apps, websites, or settings may be restricted or pre-installed depending on your work environment. 
So this is uh, something that you might do, particularly if you're at school, and this is a work site for you. Let's come back here. And then of course you can set up a user for a child. For children under 13, managed by, for a church. Now, the purpose of this is for children under 13, uh, and it's managed by a parent or guardian. All right, are you ready to open the box? On your mark, get set. Go, all right, now open the box and let's get your Chromebook out. Yes, you can open it up. And the first thing most people will tell you is you should uh, charge your Chromebook. We'll talk about that in just a minute, but I want you to check one thing when you open the lid. I want you to see that it does have power. Most all Chromebooks when they arrive will have power of around 50 to 75% in their battery. If the Chromebook is dead and there is no charge in the battery, I want you to take it back to Best Buy or send it back to Amazon and get another one. It probably means there's a problem with the battery or the battery is being discharged for a long time and this can lead into problems. Usually what will happen when you open your Chromebook up from the box, it should have, as I said, 50 to 75% power. I know you're anxious, you'll want to get using it right away, and that's fine. Just plug it in and let it charge as you're using it, not a problem. Most Chromebooks get great battery life. You'll probably get maybe two or three days off a of charge. I would just leave it plugged in at night and charging. It doesn't overcharge, you don't have to worry about that. And I'll tell you a little bit about that in a minute, but just plug it in and let's get on with it. Now, uh, the next thing you'll want to do is log in. We've briefed you on that. You simply log in and set up uh, your account as we discussed in the earlier part of the, the video. So step two, you'll of course want to connect to Wi-Fi. And that's real easy, they'll prompt you and you just connect to your Wi-Fi in your home. Now if your Chromebook is next to your router and you're not gonna be using it as a laptop and moving it around, what you might wanna do is plug it in. A wired connection is always faster than a wireless, but the software will prompt you and you shouldn't have any trouble uh, setting up your Wi-Fi, although you will need to know your uh, Wi-Fi login and password. In the initial setup, you'll probably also be prompted to sync it with your phone, so your phone will be able to unlock your Chromebook as well. All right, let's talk about updating your Chromebook. That's usually step three. I want to talk a bit about the Chrome operating system. Now, on your Chromebook, you'll have two copies of the Chrome operating system. There's a primary copy, and there's a secondary copy. It is the secondary copy that gets updated all day long. That secondary copy gets updated with new features, antivirus software, anti-malware software, Chrome updates, all sorts of updates gets updated in that secondary copy. Now, at a point in time, what happens is, is the copies get switched. So the secondary copy then becomes your primary copy, and that's how you get all the updated software. So what makes that switch occur? And that switch occurs when you turn your computer off. So a good plan is to use the computer through the day and at night when you go to bed, turn the computer off, leave it powered on. And then when you get up in the morning, turn it on and bingo, you'll have your new copy of the software all loaded. If you are a lid closure like I am and you just close the lid and don't turn it off, then you're not going to get the updated software. So once a week, you'll have to turn the machine off and turn it back on and it will update. Or of course, you can do a manual update. But for everyone, it's so simple. I want to keep this real simple and just turn your computer off and turn it back on and bingo, it all happens. Super easy and it's very fast. You won't even know it occurred. So that's all you need to do. Okay, so now you've logged in, you've got your Chromebook up, and you're ready to start working. You can, Just to remind everyone that you can adjust the settings for comfort. You can increase the font size, screen, zoom in, you can change the mouse pointer size, adjust the brightness and volume, lots of adjustments on your Chromebook. Also remember that you can plug it into an external monitor. If you want a bigger monitor, you want two monitors, just plug it into an external monitor and you'll be able to have lots of screen area. The other thing, of course, is your mouse. Well, we'll talk about the mouse in a minute, but your trackpad. I would 
really encourage you to learn how to use a trackpad effectively. Most trackpads on Chromebooks work great. There's a one finger, two finger, and three finger swipe. Lots of videos online that describe how to do that. And once you learn this, you'll be able to navigate your Chromebook using your trackpad very effectively. Now, also, you may want to use a mouse, and that you can certainly use any of the mice that you have around for, for your PC will work fine on a Chromebook. Not a problem. You can plug one directly into one of the ports. You can use one of the ones with a dongle. I had this. This is a wireless mouse. It's a Bluetooth mouse. Uh, I think I paid about $10 for it, and it will connect uh, by Bluetooth to your, to your Chromebook. Some Chromebooks don't have a lot of ports on them. Now, you can expand that. But, but for simplicity, you may just want to pick up a, a, a Bluetooth mouse, which doesn't require a physical connection into your Chromebook. Step five is learning the basics. Click the launcher button to see all your apps. Explore the Chrome browser, check out YouTube, and open some Gmail. There's also a help app built into your Chromebook with tutorial and tips. And here's my favorite part. Don't be afraid to click things. You can't break a Chromebook. So have some fun with it. Now you're probably also wondering, what about, what about antivirus software or malware? Don't need any of that. It's all included in the operating system within your Chromebook, and it's going to get updated and managed automatically with your Chrome OS updates. So don't even worry about that. Don't download, install anything like that on your Chromebook. So there you have it. Unbox. Charge, connect, sign in, update, adjust for comfort, and explore. Five easy steps to make your Chromebook truly yours. Try a little bit each day and you'll be amazed how quickly it becomes second nature. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time with more friendly tech tips.